Hello everyone, Dr. Suresh here and in this video we will be talking about the regulation of cholesterol synthesis. So why we need cholesterol to be, cholesterol synthesis to be regularized? Because irrespective of having variety of functions cholesterol, its synthesis has to be tightly regulated. Why? Because there is a no balance in influx and deflux of cholesterol from the liver to other parts of the body. So what is happening here? The most of the cholesterol which is transporting out of the liver, it started accumulating at the endothelial lining of arteries, especially in the heart, okay, making life-threatening or serious conditions such as cardiovascular disorders like atherosclerosis or myocardial infractions. So, regulation has to be proper in case of cholesterol synthesis. So, what are all the types of mechanisms involved in regulation of cholesterol synthesis? We will discuss. First one is regulation of transcription. We are all aware. All proteins in our body synthesized by the way of mechanism transcription and translation because the master here is DNA right so DNA will direct mRNA okay or RNA tRNA okay synthesis and from here that means formation of mRNA from DNA is transcription okay and other types of RNAs and from there that mRNA to protein is translation protein synthesis and this also we are aware that all enzymes in our body are protein in nature and this way by the way of transcription and translation all proteins that means all enzymes are synthesized so we all know the rate limited step or committed step of cholesterol synthesis is hmg coir reductase and this way this hmg coir reductase is synthesized so the regulation of this enzyme uh, production is at the level of transcription okay so when there is a good amount of cholesterol cholesterol itself goes and bind to the steroid binding region on the dna and it directs the dna okay if there is a need of cholesterol it directs dna to form hmg coa reductase if more co hmg coa reductase more cholesterol production at the same way okay actually if cholesterol is not there and steroid binding region will be expressed and more hmg coa reductase will be produced and it produces in turn more cholesterol if there is sufficient or ample amount of cholesterol, it goes and binds to the sterol binding region of DNA and it stops the expression of DNA to form concern mRNA and concern mRNA to HMG coir reductase. So this way it uh, switch on switch off mechanism, it holds the regulation of HMG coir reductase. Same way, cholesterol regulates the expression of HMG coir reductase gene and the covalent modification. This is also one of the regulation where it is a short term regulation but long term regulation is by through transcription and short term regulation is by covalent modification of the HMG coir reductase enzyme and cyclic AMP mediate cascade phosphorylates the enzyme which is inactive dephosphorylated form of HMG coir reductase is active so based on this phosphorylation and dephosphorylation similar to the glycogen synthase and glycogen phosphorylase so that we have studied in uh, glycogen metabolism okay same mechanism here implies so further what are the hormones involved in the regulation insulin and thyroxine increases activity of hmg reductase means more cholesterol production cortisol and glucagon decreases its activity so less cholesterol production drugs such as lower statins they are all like uh, lipid lowering drugs okay so cholesterol is a lipid so the drugs like statins lower statin other statin group of drugs are competitive inhibitors of hmg coir reductase so if hmg coir reductase is inhibited there is no production of cholesterol so in clinical practice these statin drugs used to reduce the cholesterol level in the blood. If there is no production, then how come the cholesterol levels, I mean, like will be there in the circulation? So, you see here in the diagrammatic presentation here, what are all the inhibitors and activators? Cholesterol itself is an active inhibitor at a level of a gene, okay, so a transcription level. So, if it is inhibiting, there is no enzyme HMG coir reductase, so there is no cholesterol, okay. If there is no cholesterol, how come it will be inhibiting? Right, so absence of cholesterol increases the expression of HMG coir reductase and more cholesterol will be produced. Okay, and glucagon and cortisone and statin drugs they will inhibit the HMG coir reductase uh, activity. Okay, they are competitive inhibitors. So, other way, insulin and thyroxine, okay, they are positive modifiers of HMG coir reductase, they will like positively express, they will increase or the enhance the expression of HMG coA reductase. So, HMG coA will be converted into cholesterol. So, we see covalent modification of HMG coA reductase here. Here you see HMG coA a conversion of cholesterol, the enzyme is HMG coA reductase. So, here it is active. 
so when there is a phosphorylation step so reductase kinase is the enzyme okay which phosphorylates the hmg coa reductase that means there is a use of atp which converted into adp so there is attachment of phosphate group here which is coming from atp and when there is a phosphate group attached to hmg coa okay phosphorylated form of hmg coa reductase is inactive right so this glucagon increases cyclic amp level cyclic kinase enzyme and it stimulates the inhibitor 1 okay and so what it will do it increases the concentration of pro i mean it decreases the concentration of protein phosphorylase protein phosphorylase will do it dephosphorylates the hmg coa reductase okay so here insulin increases the activity of protein phosphorylase so it dephosphorylates the hmg coa reductase and converting inactive hmg coa to active hmg coa reductase so this way HMG CoA reductase will be covalently modified based on the requirement. So, coming to major routes by which cholesterol leaves the liver, okay, we have seen the dietary sources, I mean, like what are all the things like keeping liver as a center point, okay. So, what are all the sources of cholesterol? One is dietary cholesterol, the food that we are eating, okay, from that cholesterol we are ingesting, okay. And chylomicron, when chylomicron undergo degradation, cholesterol is present in the inside of chylomicron, will coming out, that is also source. And cholesterol from extra hepatic tissues we have already studied that cholesterol synthesis will take place not only in liver in other parts so that is also the source so that cholesterol will be gathered by hdl so which dump it to the liver so it will reaches to the liver right so this is liver cholesterol pool and from liver cholesterol pool how cholesterol is distributed one is secretion as vldl and free cholesterol secreted in bile and conversion to bile acids and bile salts so this way cholesterol will be sended out of the liver so the one is influx and other is efflux so the liver what is having the major role in controlling plasma levels of ldl cholesterol so liver synthesizes cholesterol liver removes cholesterol from lipoprotein remnants liver is the only organ that can excrete cholesterol through bile liver converts cholesterol to bile acids so you see here plasma lipid profile in the diagram and the normal values so in our body total plasma lipids is 400 to 600 so this is a combination of triacylglycerols total cholesterol that means total cholesterol means residual cholesterol ldl cholesterol phospholipids all the things will come so total cholesterol level will be 140 to 200 milligrams per deciliter hdl cholesterol in male 30 to 60 and hdl cholesterol female 35 to 75 ldl cholesterol 80 to 130 triglycerides 50 to 150 so 400 if you take as a 400 so now cholesterol total will be 140 okay and hdl cholesterol will be 30 and LDL cholesterol will be 80 and triglycerides will be 50. So calculate this 0, 4, 3, 7, 15, 20 and then 300. It is coming 300. Okay. So like this again one more we have that is triglycerides, HDL, LDL and total cholesterol. So total cholesterol is 140. So it is a combination of 80 plus 30. So LDL plus HDL. It gives you the range like 830 means 110 milligrams per. There is a range actually. Okay, so the range has to be 400 to 600 milligrams per deciliter. This is a normal range. And phospholipids also 150 to 200 milligrams per deciliter. And free fatty acids 10 to 20 milligrams per deciliter. So here again you can add up like uh, 150 of phospholipids and 10 milligrams of free fatty acids to form total lipid values. So that's all about the regulation of cholesterol and uh, lipid values in the circulation. Thanks for watching. Thank you.